are we good are we getting me hey hey okay i like attention hi <laughs> welcome back this is episode three trace i don't know how to say three in another language uh-huh today i didn't want to wear pants shocking so i wore a dress i feel like a therapist in this dress i was gonna like get glam for this you know more glam but then i realized like it's my podcast also does anyone else could also apply to men but mostly women feel like uglier with makeup on like i just never wear makeup so much that i'm so used to see myself without it so usually when i add makeup i feel like i just look worse like is that just me i feel like most people put on makeup to feel better or prettier or glamour and i just generally feel uglier when i put on makeup you know so if i'm having a bad day i'm just having a bad day like i can't really fix it you know what i mean it's just it's what i have to work with anyways let, oh duh what do we need to get into first my tattoos bitch so i don't know if you can see from like that far. this is hard to look all right but i got this this skull this dude is really cute i was worried about how the guy's sketch was gonna turn out because he was so like one sketch can't see it no nitpicking that's what you get like I was worried but like he was really nice when I got there and like let me like have an opinion of exactly what we were doing and I knew he would I knew he was just being like very stern to begin with but it was gonna be nice and this is just over here it just words. It's nothing like spectacular. I feel like lately when I told people I got tattoos and I was like, I got two. And people are like, you got two? I'm like, yeah. And then I show them this one and they're like, oh my God. And then I show them this one. And then they just like have no response because like I get it. It's just words. Um, it's one of the albums of my favorite artists like ever. And if you know me, you know who I'm talking about. It's the ready set. But um, I've liked him for like a decade. So I figured, you know, it's about it's about time. Also, like it kind of corresponds. And they're like in the same place have the same style like i'm very happy with them so that's exciting i feel so like i'm a new woman i'm so tatted you know what i realized recently that instead of cussing when i like drop something or like stub my toe or things like that i just hiss now and by that i literally mean like a cat just going like i literally just hiss all the time where did that come from I don't really remember so I really like cats okay always have always will when I was little I used to have my dad built me a shelf across my whole wall in my bedroom and it was just filled of stuffed animal cats and I'm not just talking like one by one side by side I'm talking like stacked <laughs> like I had a lot of stuffed animal cats didn't buy them all for myself I was just given so many cats over the years but anyways long story short I love cats and I think one day I just like hissed at my boyfriend because he said something and he was just like did you just hiss at me and I was like yeah he's like don't do that and now I do it all the time and he actually does it all the time so but instead of like now when I drop something instead of going like shit I'm just I just like I hiss at the object I just at the object that I drop like I just hiss at it and it's a really weird habit to have i know i hiss at my dog sometimes too like if he won't be quiet i'll just hiss at him it's, it sounds very odd and i feel like it is very odd but it's kind of fun too you know like if someone says something annoying i can just go like you know i really only do it to my boyfriend i think anyone else if i did it to them they'd be like oh ellie you're not a cat you're a 23 year old woman to that i say <laughs> anyway speaking of being an adult has anyone talked about post-college depression because i think it's real okay i think i'm out of it kind of <laughs> um but after spending like your entire life in school and then getting out yes it's free yes it's like oh my god i'm not gonna have any homework for the rest of my life i never have to go to class even though being an adult, you still have, like, projects to work on at work and have to go to meetings. And it's basically the same thing. But nonetheless, it was very freeing graduating. But then I was like, 
what am I supposed to do with myself? Like, all I knew was going to school forever. I mean, I also have, like, worked my entire life. I feel like it might be worse for people who are fortunate enough to go to high school and college and not have to pay their way through it. You know, good for you if you don't have to work your ass off while also working your ass off simultaneously at a job. Um, So it might be more shocking to them. But still, I was just like, I have all this free time now. I don't have to do homework. I don't have to answer all these school emails and, like, meet all these deadlines. I mean, I give myself deadlines because I'm a crazy person and I like to have to-do lists and deadlines because I like structure. It makes me feel like my life has purpose and meaning. But I was really sad after I graduated. I was like, what am I supposed to do with my life? And at the time, my job was like, we are overstaffed and my hours were getting cut So on top of like not having the time of school and then having our having less hours at my job and then I wasn't doing any YouTube or anything. I was just like, what is the meaning of life? I'm doing nothing. I felt very lost. Okay, I think post-college depression is a real thing. Um, I feel better now. Okay, still not great. But, you know, you got to pick yourself up and do something with your life, which is why I started this podcast Hi, I needed something to do, someone to talk to. That is my camera. Thank you. <laughs> that I spent a decent amount of money on. Um, so if you just graduated or you're about to graduate, know that what you're feeling or what you're about to feel is probably very normal. Like it's very overwhelming graduating in this time, especially because of like COVID and everything. Like so many places are on a job freeze and it just makes the industry, whatever you're going into, depending more competitive. And also, like, if you want to move for a job, that's just been more complicated with COVID. Story of my life. And, yeah. So, don't worry. Don't fret. If you want to cry, please do. It helps sometimes. I've cried many times the past couple months after graduating. Okay, I've been thinking about this recently. And I am a huge... I'm a huge advocate for, like, following your dreams. Like, bitch... You got a dream, no matter what it is, do it. Get it done. Fucking don't give up on anything you want. It all comes in time. Another lyric by my favorite band. But um, but truly, like, I think you can do anything if you put your mind to it. And lately, after graduating college, I've just realized <laughs> how scary it is. <laughs> like, I know that having your dreams come true is possible. Like, it is a tangible thing. But, um... I think it's hard like it's so hard you have to work so hard and even if you're talented or good at whatever skill or craft or occupation you want to go into you still have to work so hard some people get things handed to them bless your soul if you do but you know like the thought of like moving across the country to follow your dreams is terrifying (laughs) the thought of you know like quitting your day job to pursue something You know, like, I am fortunate enough that I have such a work ethic that I can get things like this, a podcast done, but still also have a daytime job. And, like, you know, like, I have to. Mama's got to make her money. Ew, I don't like that I refer to myself as mama. I am nowhere near having kids, nor will I ever. I don't know if I will be. Anyways, that's a different conversation I don't need to have with you. But, um, where is I going with that? Oh, (laughs) No, seriously, where was I going with that? Oh, ADHD moment. Nonetheless, (laughs) it's, it's scary following your dreams. And I've really realized that recently because, you know, I've been thinking, I've been having a lot of moments this past week where I just have the sudden realization of like, I'm gonna die one day. Like, I don't, (laughs) you know what I mean? And I know whenever, a lot of times when I tell people life is short, people are like, no, life is actually really long. And like, logistically speaking yeah life is pretty damn long if you know you beat death until you're however old and you take care of yourself like you can live a really long time but just the pure fact that we really don't know when we're gonna die and like our time is so limited and unknown like oh this is a scary thought this is getting a little deep (laughs) right now but um a couple times this week I was just like oh my god I'm gonna die like I need to do something with my life and I know I have to be logical about it and not just you know do something spontaneous where it may put me in an awful place financially or mentally or physically you know like I know I need to think about it 
and you know plan it out to some extent but you know life short and you really should follow your dreams <laughs> that's the moral of the story and I really should take my own advice on that um because I don't know what I'm doing still sitting here in not my hometown but I don't need to give away my location still I'm still living in the state I grew up in and it's not ideal you know and I know everything happens for a reason you know believe in the universe and the timing of it and things come to you when they're supposed to I get it honey Bitch, I lived it my whole life. You know, like, after things happen, I understand why they take so long to happen. Patience is a virtue. I get all that. But still, I feel like I'm running out of time. And I know I'm only 23, but I'm gonna go. So I need to not move slow. Hey, I really should be a jingle writer. So, uh, follow your dreams. Shout out Mac Miller. Rest in peace. It's just funny how, like, I literally just went on a rant about following your dreams and I still can't follow my own advice. Isn't that funny how you just, you literally, like, you have the answers to what, like, whatever you're wondering about right now, if you should, like, go for that job or major in that specific thing or if you should break up with that person or not, like, you know, you know deep down, you just don't want to admit it to yourself yet. Unless you're more mentally stable than me and you can admit it to yourself. But I feel like... I have all the answers inside here, you know, of what I want to do with my life. And I feel, I feel like other people do too, you know. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. I didn't know my podcast today was going to turn into a very deep self-reflection and make me feel like I need to, you know, pack my bags and leave right now. Um, anyways, we should switch topics. <laughs> Deflecting. It's okay, I have therapy later. I can talk about it with a real person and not to my camera. Even though it's through Zoom, so it's, like, technically through my camera. But, like, Zoom therapy is cool. You know what I mean? I feel like it's a little less intimidating than having another person, like, look you in your, your eyes, like, directly rather than, like, through a camera screen. You know what I mean? Even though I don't mind eye contact. I really do like eye contact. I probably make more eye contact than a normal person and I feel like people probably get a little freaked out sometimes but like I don't even think about it you know anyways <laughs> we're it's just it's gonna be a magical episode today I really do think that like and I know some people are probably gonna roll their eyes at this but I think if you truly like believe something it will happen or like if you speak something into existence I don't think things magically fall into your lap but I do think like if you're mentally working towards that mindset or like actually in your daily life like taking steps towards getting there like things happen and it was funny because I was talking about like getting another job you know possibly soon to just like save more money you know what I mean so like I can do things I want to and one of my old managers offered me my old job from like two years ago which honestly is one of the biggest compliments ever the fact that a person was like hey I appreciate you and enjoyed working with you so much and know you're such a great worker that I want you to work with me again. Like, that is such a nice compliment. Like, I take so much pride in my work ethic and I think it's fucking sexy as hell, which is, like, not, not in reference to, like, my manager asking me to work. I just mean, like, in the quality of a partner. Like, I will never in my life date or marry a lazy ass man my boyfriend right now is I remember I told him one time like one thing I appreciate about him is his work ethic and he was like you make me sound like I'm like an old man and I was like no I don't mean it like that I just I would never date someone who like what do you do in your free time and they're like uh I don't know I guess I like just like play video games or uh like like no no like I just you how uninteresting how flat of a person and I don't mean flat as in like skinny I mean flat as in like their personality you know like dynamic characters flat characters read a book bitch but I just could never date someone like that like ever or like even surround yourself because you are a product of your environment and if you surround yourself with people who just like work a nine to five that they hate and literally just come home watch tv go to bed and do the same thing every day like how boring how 
unmotivating. Like, bitch, I want people who got dreams, who got plans, who are moving, who are working, who are grinding every day. So, you know, like, think about that. Think about, like, the people you're friends with or, like, who you're dating. And, like, if you aren't happy with your life right now, think about, like, how your friends' lives are. Like, are they in similar situations? Like, if you're unhappy with your job and feel like you aren't going anywhere or you don't know what to do with your life or all your other friends like that? Or are they, like, working really hard and, like, doing what they can to get to where they want to be? You know what I mean? Your environment has such a huge impact on you, and that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I don't remember how I started this. I just spat. I don't remember how I started this rant, but wow, putting on... My fucking therapist stress today. I really feel like ranty and just like so much advice is just coming out of me. You know what I mean? Wow. I didn't know the stress really did that to me. Um, also, this is not a color I normally wear. Like beige, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. You know what I mean? I told myself recently, I was like, I want to wear things I normally wouldn't wear. And then I went to the store because I'm going on a road trip soon. And so I wanted to get like maybe a couple cute clothes. And literally as I was checking out in the line, I noticed all items I was holding were all different black denim items. <laughs> and I was like, there I am, still wearing black, still wearing denim. And I actually don't wear denim that that much, but I do like it. And I was just like, wow, Ellie, you, you really try to branch out here. You really did. Um, but I ended up returning uh like 75 percent of the things and probably will turn the other thing because like they just don't fit my ass is too big now my waist is too skinny <laughs> i'm just unproportionate but no seriously i wanted this dress and it just didn't fit my ass and i was kind of upset because it was really cute check out my tiktok it's on there ellie sonia seven always gotta plug tiktok almost 2,000 followers hi wow my biggest platform guys i'm famous if you think i'm animated here i just thought this was funny i was thinking about it and like in my daily life, hairball. <laughs> like, I'm really not that much different. You should see, I communicate solely on pictures. I love to send my boyfriend pictures of, you know, whatever I'm feeling, whatever I'm doing. And um, it's really, <laughs> I looked like a nun that day like I let's see if there's other funny ones um oh that was me at the gym looking like a cutie patootie like I don't you know I couldn't date someone that didn't appreciate my faces and all that comes with them you know what I mean so adorable I really am actually though you know I am a blessing in anyone's life. And all of you should think that way. You know, we're all special. I think I'm fucking special. Are you kidding me? I recently have, like, loved myself more. <laughs> like, I took a short video of me, like, dancing the other day. And, you know, I can be really hard on myself about, like, my body and, like, whatever and my body image, how I look. Yada, yada, yada. A lot of struggle people have. But I was, like, watching back the dance video, and it was a very short clip, but I was, like, oh, my God. Like, I look so sexy and so strong. <laughs> like, I've been very hard on, like, my progress with um, gaining muscle and whatnot um, because I didn't for years, and that's a different story. But I was just, like, oh, my God. Like, I'm a sculpted goddess. <laughs> but seriously, I think, you know, it's a good reminder to remind yourself that didn't really make sense. But, like, how unique and special you are. And, like, it's funny, I think, how, I don't know if you do this, but I'll, like, in moments, like, don't like how I look. Or, like, I'm not happy with who I am. And then I'll kind of look back and realize how hard I was being on myself, you know, and how, like, I should have appreciated myself then. And I've really been trying to be conscious about that and be like, hey, you know, you only got one body. Oh, my God. 
I would be great to be on live TV. Um, but you only got one body, one mind. Like, appreciate it. And, like, who you are and what you have. And, like, that's also okay to change. You know what I mean? Like, I think I've drastically changed a lot in the past couple of years. And, like, in good ways, though. I think my core personality, like, bleh, is still the same. Like, if you watch some of my old vlogs, I probably still am just as fucking animated as I am now. But I think a lot of, you know, like, just growing into an adult more, probably. This this podcast is a coming of age, if you will, you know, of my life. I think my vlogs was, like, the prequel, you know what I mean? Like, it was, it was, I don't know, the prequel. We'll just leave it at that because I don't know how to expand on that. But I think this is, like, the sequel and it's the coming of age story, you know, into I, who I really am, who I really want to be gonna be so wise one day so love yourself don't be so hard on yourself you know appreciate what you got eat that cupcake even if you feel ugly because you deserve it or ice cream but cold stone is my weakness um i get cold stone all the time i feel like i mentioned that before cold stone just so good Mwah. had it last night yeah which like it's okay you know what one of my friends told me recently um one of my gym friends shout out my gym friends love them all but um he was saying how when you get older that your family doesn't become or isn't your core group anymore you know of like who you spend time with and who your family is like it's just not same with like how you outgrow friends too you can outgrow your family and like that's okay and I think at the end of the day like obviously your family's gonna know you really well if you like spent all your time with them growing up I mean obviously people have different family circumstances but at the end of the day I'm sure they'll probably know you best but like it's okay to outgrow someone and not have the same views or morals anymore or like the same kind of direction in life that's okay you know what I mean? Like, we're all, it's, it's, I don't know. Family is such a weird, a weird thing for me. Cause I feel like I hear so many people be like, you know, family isn't blood. And at the same time, at the same time, people being like, you know, family is like all you have at the end of the day. And I, I'm so conflicted on that because I think they're kind of both true. I think that you can, find family that isn't blood and it's weird because it's like yeah they're my family because I'm related to them but I didn't choose for you to be my mom I didn't choose for you to be my sister you know what I mean like you're just born into a family and like that's who you have and that doesn't mean you're gonna get along with them just because you share the same DNA if anyways if or if anything that could like mean you would butt heads more because you're just so similar that it just clashes especially if you have both like really dominant and strong personalities or are both super stubborn or something like that like you're gonna clash it's a given so oh my camera's gonna overheat that's cool it's coming I feel it um let me finish my thought but I don't know I'm just so conflicted on that what do you guys think I don't really know I really am so conflicted on that topic and I'm sure people have very different views and I really don't know. I think because this is such like a transitional period in my life too that things are just changing so fast. You know, like I'm 23. Like I'm an adult, but I'm still such a young adult that I'm just like drastically changing. Like your 20s is just you like evolving and changing and becoming into a person. And I don't think when I hit 30, I'm going to have all this shit figured out. I really don't think so. And I know so, but I still feel like I'll have a better idea of who I am and what I want and how I want to spend my time and live my life and like you know right now I'm just trying to figure it out and like trying to have fun doing it do I still cry a lot a fucking course (laughs) do I still get like pissed off a lot and stuff of course but like just actively trying to be a better person every day and like figure out what you want I think is so important like if you have no idea what you want to do most people in their 20s try something whoa what an idea just literally like if you're scared to date, go out on a date anyways. How are you supposed to know what you want if you don't try? Same with literally anything in life. If you don't know what career path you want to take, take a class in something. Go, like, ask your friend about something of a field they're in. Like, just try something as a hobby. 
Like, fuck it, just... If anything, just go to a new restaurant instead of going to fucking Chick-fil-A every week that I know a lot of you probably do, but, bitch, I don't... Because I'm unique. Just kidding. I just don't really like chicken. But, um... And I've had Chick-fil-A, like, three times, and I honestly thought it was kind of overrated. Sorry, not sorry. They do have good dipping sauce, though. But, like, try a different restaurant. You know, just that. You don't know who you can meet there. You don't know who what you'll try that might make you be like, bitch, what up? Like, I don't think everything's going to be a life-changing experience, but I think they're stepping stones to get you to where you want to be. It's about the little things. God, I am going on so many, like, inspirational rants today. This dress really brings that out of me. Okay, sorry, dance break. Wow, I've actually been talking for like 30 minutes straight. I'm kind of like winded a little bit. Wow. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought Allie would want a break from talking? Not me. You know what's funny about like changing too? I, for a couple years, like hated my hair straight. Okay, I think because like I didn't like myself for a couple years and I mostly wore my hair straight then, I wanted to push myself so far away from those times in my life that like I didn't want to wear my hair straight anymore so that's why like if you see in a lot of my pictures if you follow me on Instagram TikTok Ellie Sonia 7 like a lot of times my hair is wavy because I just like didn't want to wear it straight anymore and I'm finally like starting to like it straight again because like this is who I am like this is my natural hair and I know I should appreciate it but um like is anyone else like that I like heavily um, correlate experiences with, you know, what I was wearing, who I was friends with, what I was doing. And so a lot of times when I have a negative experience, I just kind of want to distance myself from that because I, because like certain things remind me of it. And if I don't want to be a part of like a certain friend group anymore, or I don't want to like remember that time of my life, or I want to like get over that relationship, like I just try to distance myself from like everything from it I don't know if that's healthy I feel like it is I feel like because like I don't want to hold on to things do I still yes <laughs> I have a hard time letting things go sometimes but I've realized you know just like bashing into my head all the time that everything happens for a reason and like it truly does that like yeah you can be sad about something or mad or angry or whatever but like I'm not religious at all, but I do like the quote, this too shall pass. I don't know the direct origin of it. Maybe it didn't start from the Bible and someone just put that shit in it, you know? I, again, not religious, so I don't know the history of religious things. But, like, things do always pass. So, I don't know where I was going with this tangent. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, This is going to be a nightmare to edit. What was I even talking about? Oh, not wanting my hair straight, but yeah, so... Like, I like it now. You know, I think things can come back around. You also, like, shouldn't ruin something for yourself because of something or someone else, you know? Like, if you, like, always, like, got, um, fucking, like, I'll use Chick-fil-A as an example again. Like, if you and your ex always got, like, Chick-fil-A on a Friday night and now you don't want to eat it anymore because you're heartbroken. But if you love Chick-fil-A, like... You know, maybe give yourself some time if it really does upset you getting it because it reminds you of that person. But, like, you shouldn't completely ever get rid of something that you love just because of something or someone else. You know what I mean? So, like, I like my straight hair again. You know, I'm, like, taking back ownership. Being, like, I am not the person I was a couple years ago, bitch. I'm motherfucking Ali Soroka now, okay? I'm not just Ali Soroka. I'm motherfucking Ali Soroka. So, uh, you know, this is real. This is me. Shout out to Emily Lovato. Her new album kind of sucked, but still appreciate her putting all her, like, work and uh, trauma into an album because that's really fucking hard. And, like, it's beautiful, but I just, like, wasn't a fan. You know what I mean? Except the song with Ariana Grande. That was a bop. There was a couple other good ones, but, like, the one with Ari was really good. Anyways, I don't know why the sky is blue. But baby, you and I should ride this through. <laughs> I should really quit my day job and become like a songwriter or a jingle writer. That's basically the same thing, just in shortened form or whatever. One time, 
at one of my old jobs. Actually, it's not that old. I don't know why I said old jobs. It was literally my job before the current one I have. Um, but we had this regular customer and he told me I should be a comedy writer. And I was like, Cy, that was his name. He was this older gentleman and he was, shout out Cy if you're watching this, miss you, you're very sweet. Um, but I like put one of my vlog flyers, <laughs> like on our community boards at my job. It was a coffee shop. And so, so many of our customers watched my vlogs and got to get that, those views, got to grind um but he like told me I was really funny and that I should be a comedy writer and that was one of the best compliments I've ever received and I'll never forget that and honestly that would be something that I would totally love to try because obviously as I talked about my previous episode or was that my first episode my first episode like how I just love comedy sitcoms stand-up comedy like I love comedy so much so thank you one of the best compliments anyways okay I think I don't want to go too long. You know what I mean? I've had enough therapist rants today that I don't. Can my hair like it's it's really discombobulating looking at this monitor monitor my laptop, my MacBook on like the visual because it's like it's the opposite side. You know what I mean? So if I'm touching my left side, it's right in here. So I just feel very discombobulated let me just take a sip out of my mug just kidding there's nothing in it but my lip gloss my lip gloss is popping my lip gloss is cool all the boys keep falling they chase me after school what you know about me what you what you know okay <laughs> i need to relax um i think that's it i hope you guys i still don't know what to fucking do for my outro peace out <laughs> What's cracking? Bitch, my back is. Hey. Okay. Um. But seriously, um. Thank you so much for watching. Um. Uh, click the like button. Comment. Subscribe if you haven't. I was looking at my analytics and you. Like sixty-seven percent of my viewers aren't subscribed. What are you doing, bitch? Don't you want to know when all of this? is posted new yeah you do so click that subscribe button why not what's it gonna do nothing besides let you know when these podcasts are hot and fresh so yeah and i'll see you guys next week bye uh uh what you know about me what you what you know mm -mm, what you know about me what you what you know uh do the Dougie. I don't even know what the fucking Dougie is. <laughs> I never actually knew. Okay. Bye.